This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. Now, Jenko shipping up more than 65% so far this year. The company's dry bulk carrier ships, they transport everything such as iron ore, coal, grain, steel, all other major products. And it just announced earnings after the bell, $1.20 a share in profit. This exceeded analyst estimates. Shares in after hours trading. Let's take a look. Yes, we know that that is up well right now, unchanged. It was up previously. Jenko, well, they'd already previously announced that they were cutting, they were suspending, rather, the cash dividend and the buybacks. Let's talk to the chief financial officer of the company, John Wobensmith. John, good to have you with us. Thanks very much for coming in. Nice to see you, Pim. Um, let's just talk a little bit about the results. Uh, the uh, the $1.20 uh, EPS beating uh, the Wall Street's estimates. Where is this coming from? Is this seeing renewed interest in, let's say, China, for example? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, specifically, as far as um, beating some of the numbers, I think that had a lot to do with um, three of our Cape size ships that we have on a profit share program. And as Cape size ships have recovered in the second quarter, we were able to realize on those profit share agreements. All right. So you've got those Cape size. What about actually buying new ships? Is that one of the reasons I want to link the, the suspension of the dividend and uh, also the suspension of the share repurchase program? Is that also to try to take advantage of, you know, maybe buying some other ships from distressed sellers? Yeah, I mean, I th we're, we're constantly looking at acquisitions. Um, we haven't quite found the right one yet, but we do think the opportunity will, uh, will come down the pike hopefully soon. What about financing? How available is financing? Are you meeting with, uh, with bankers, or, or are they not taking those calls anymore? I, I look, certainly it is more difficult now than, uh, than it was a year ago, but um, if you take a company like Genco that, in our mind, is, is the blue chip in the peer group, we still do have access to, uh, to financing. All right. And if you've got access to financing, what are they looking at to make sure that you're going to have those stable day rates? I mean, what, let's say, what is iron ore demand right now? Well, iron ore is interesting because what has been driving that upward demand and, and really has fueled the recovery in the dry bulk shipping markets has been China. Um, China has seen a recovery on its steel production side. The numbers are actually up 2% year-on-year through June. More importantly, their iron ore imports are up 30% year-on-year through June. And a lot of that has to do with, obviously, the, the extra bank lending, the stimulus package that, that has worked very well in China, recovery of their real estate, recovery of the steel industry. But also, there's been an arbitrage that's taken place where it's been cheaper for them to import iron ore than actually source their own domestic iron ore. And that's good for your ships. Absolutely. And what about the other demand drivers? I mean, are you seeing anything from either Western Europe or Japan? What are those customers telling you? Well, actually, if you, if you look at where um, the, the major iron ore importers, Europe, Japan, and China, China is the only one that has really recovered. Um, and China obviously recovered pretty quickly. We are just starting to see the beginnings of uh, some additional iron ore liftings going into Japan, and we think Europe is also going to follow. I mean, the interesting thing about Japan Japan is it does look like their auto business is actually recovering quicker than, uh, than people originally thought, which bodes very well for their steel industry and dry bulk shipping. What about uh, the rate structure right now? Uh, give us some idea, for example, with Genco. I mean, how much of the fleet have you got chartered out? We have, for the remaining part of this year, approximately two-thirds. And then going into next year, we have 44, 45 percent fixed. And what's really important about, important about the 45 percent is that they are what I'll call legacy charters that were done a, a year or more, more ago. So the levels are two to three times what, uh, what the day rates are today from a spot market standpoint. From a, from a spot market yeah. standpoint. So it, can you break out the different kinds of ships? Because, uh, you know, not all ships are made equal. They're different sizes. Right. What's getting the best rates right now? The Cape size rates have clearly seen the recovery first because prim predominantly they carry only iron ore and coal. Um, we have started to see a recovery in the Panamax and the Supermax sectors, which carry coal, grain, and some of the other minor bulks. Um, but the Cape size sectors definitely led the recovery, and as I said, we're starting to see the other sectors follow along. What about the uh, new builds? Because, I mean, there were a lot of orders on the books. We never really found out how many were going to get built because we didn't right. know whether the shipyards had the financing or whether the, the companies had the charters to support the, chi the, the ships. What's the, the status of the new build market? It, it, is still, um, it is still a very large question mark within the industry. And the reason for that is, is because you can tell what the projected numbers are for 2010 and 2011, but only about half of those ships actually have financing behind. It. And as we talked about earlier, the bank financing market is very difficult right now. So our belief is that a very large percentage of the O10 and O11 order book will actually not be delivered. 
What has been happening in 2009 is because of delays in shipyards for any number of reasons, only about 30% of what was supposed to be delivered has been delivered to date. And we, we think for the rest of the year that's probably going to be a fairly consistent number. And so how does that specifically affect Jenko right now? I mean, have you got any new builds that are going to be coming down the pipe? We have um, actually two additional ships that we're taking delivery of before the end of the year. Um, most likely one in, in late September, one in sometime in November. Both on charters already? Those two we have not fixed yet. We did just take delivery of the Genco Commodus, um, which is from the same yard, and we put that ship on a very nice charter of $36,000 a day for two years with Morgan Stanley. And any chance that uh, we're going to see those charters for those remaining two vessels? Are they going to come in on a surprise high side, or do you think you'd be very happy to take 36000 no, I mean, I think, you know, we're going to assess it at the time um, and, and see what the market is. Those ships are still a little too far out to actually put charters on, um, but it is something that we're watching closely. And uh, what are you seeing from the Brazil side in terms of supplies? Is there just tons of iron ore available to be shipped out? There's definitely a lot of iron ore to be shipped, and, and as I said, that has been what has really been driving the, the recovery, both iron ore moving from Brazil to China as well as Australia to China. And how about the traffic in, in Australia? We always talked about that, whether there was really a problem getting the ships in and out of the port. Right. Still a problem, or is that eased up? Yeah, you're seeing that in the, in the coal ports in Australia, but more interestingly, you're, you've seen a lot of congestion on the discharge side in China for ships waiting to discharge or unload iron ore. All right, well, if it's uh, up to 30% on imports, uh, that would probably be the reason. Exactly. All right, I want to thank you very much, John Wilbensmith, coming in, the CFO of Ajenko Shipping and Trading, sharing your thoughts on the dry bulk sector.